Good morning, everyone. Hi. It is the Moss coming to you live from our office. Yay. Yeah, we actually do work outside of Moms of Furries, believe it or not. That's right. We are small business owners to support your local small businesses. For sure, for sure. So, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, what we want to talk to you today about is something that's pretty exciting. So, you decide that you are super into being a furry, and what do you want to do? You want to have paws. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'd love to have a fursuit, but they are expensive. It takes a long time. Um, so, you know, while you're reaching, trying to uh, get to that goal, then maybe you can do a little thing on your own. Yes, and we will go into how to commission um, obtaining a fursuit from a maker yeah. in a future episode, but we want to talk to you about the easiest way to get started and yeah. what our kids have done um, is use some free online patterns and jump in. Yeah. Now, uh, I have always been an avid sewer, and I've taught all my children to sew, so it wasn't a huge um, jump for for my son to start yeah. making them, but there are a lot of differences. Sewing with a nice, thin, soft cotton is very different than sewing with fur, mm -hmm. um, and fur can be really, really expensive, so we would encourage you to start with a fleece or mm -hmm. a minky or... Um, uh, some sort of fabric, even uh, like a soft cotton sheeting like this or mm -hmm. a muslin is great. I know that they used this fabric to um, make the, the bodysuit portion oh, yeah. of a fursuit to test out the size and fit before transferring that pattern to actual fur. Right. Make your mistakes on cheaper fabric because you will make mistakes. It's not, um, uh, yeah, it's just a little bit different. Even if you are an avid sewer, I am not. But <laughs> well, you know, we had we've had some very serious discussions just about seam allowances because <laughs> yeah. with fur, when you turn the fabric and then you have to pull out the fur out of the seam, so it's not it doesn't show. There, there's just a lot to get used to. Mm -hmm. So your seam allowances have to be different. The fabric itself is much bulkier. You need different needles. So uh, definitely do some Googling, but there are there are a few sites that we're going to include in the description of this video. Um, two uh, come from DeviantArt, which yeah. we have talked about before. Yeah, DeviantArt, great site. There are filters, so it can be safe for your young furries. Uh, lots of great artwork, um, but also some free patterns. Free patterns. Uh, for instance, this pattern I know is one that we have used in mm -hmm. our home, and I printed it smaller just to show you, but... Um, we, we literally enlarged it and then took my hand and traced it. So it was a fun activity that we did together uh, to get the sizing right to do the, the first sample um, hand pop. And of course ears are relatively easy, right? And of course tails. Tails are fantastic and you can make them out of pretty much anything um, and that you can attach them just with a simple elastic loop. So. You always have your handy dandy polyfill. Yes, get polyfill whenever you see it on sale because you just will need it. Yes, it's great uh, for tails that you can be used in puffy hand paws. Yeah, so you can make little pillows that you sew into the hand paw so that when you They're when puffy. you articulate your hand, you still have the puffy movement, right. but you can still use. Use your paw, I guess. Right. My daughter is the, um, she's getting into the foam carving part of it. She's done some great work, but they did. She's quite good at it. She is. Um, she's going to take a, a local workshop. I just want to shout out, we have makerspaces. Always, always jump into the local makerspace if you have one, because someone there may be able to help you get started or get through um, a rough Maybe patch. they're secretly a furry. Maybe they're secretly a furry, and that would be something, you know. You never know. See, Joelle thinks that now that she sees furries. Everywhere. She's like, everywhere. I walk through the store and someone looks over and I'm like, I know. They know who you are. I know and I love you. <laughs> I know. Just a secret because, handshake. I know. We need a secret handshake, like some kind of paw shake, something, some kind of sign, guys. Give us a sign that you're a furry. Even if you can't tell everybody else around you, man, we got you. Yeah. We got you. Of we are proud of you. Anyway, um, but they they started, they did, remember the, one of the first prototypes, the hand paws, they were foam, mm -hmm. and it was not 
great. I they mean, were they were beautiful. Giant. They were giant, and they couldn't move. There was uh, no kind of dexterity. That's what I, I was going to say. There's some foam foot paws in there that your daughter carved and that my son has lined with Minky that we do not have permission to show you yet. So we didn't get them out, but they're really impressive. So uh, don't think that it's not possible. Right. Right. You can do it. Just jump in. Just don't start with the most expensive, um, and don't get frustrated if the first one, two, three um, things you do that's not quite right. You know. But also, let's talk about the fact that not everybody's going to want to make their own. So you could go to places like the Dealers Den. Um, that's a website that you can go to and see. Uh, I think they're straight buy and sell, but I think they also do auctioning. Um, sometimes you can get a really good deal on just, you know, some partial pieces. Um, definitely. We, yeah, we've bought some things off of Etsy, too. Oh, yeah, we even Etsy. Support, um, we want to support makers. Right. Uh, definitely support your local artists, support your, or your local furry artist, uh, your furry makers, if you can. We're just trying to help you get your paws wet. Absolutely. <laughs> and so um, one last place, our website that I want to call out is matrices.net. Matrices, yeah. They, and we, we're going to link that, um, they have links to tutorials and free patterns all over the place. This is a, a wonderful resource to get great information um, to get started. Yes. And, and really, I would say start with a tail because tails can be, you can get very elaborate, of course, but you can start out fairly basic and, um, I mean, everybody should have a tail. Everybody should have a tail. Um, yeah, because our first tails are just straight fleece stuffed with poly, mm -hmm. um, I think with rocks in the bottom, so they switch. Oh yeah, there were rocks, yeah, I forgot that they put that, they did. Anyway, so get started, um, you know, if you can't do it, support someone who does. And then next, um, we are going to take you on a little field trip to yeah. a local, um, a local business that is a fabric retailer, and they have um, all sorts of findings and notions and things. So we'll just give you an example of what you can find. But not that there's anything wrong with your major big box stores no. that sell fabric. But if you if you want to support local, you can typically find um, a bargain yes. if you are more flexible. And when you're getting started, we just really recommend that. Yeah, and also just a point that I'd like to make for local businesses, sometimes if you can develop a relationship, they can help you source better material for cheaper uh, Excellent. prices. Excellent. So anyway, all right, we'll see you in a little bit. Hi guys, we're at our local fabric store. First I wanted to show you a little bit about the foam. You'll see that there are different um, thicknesses, there's different densities, and normally there's someone here that can help you figure out. You can tell them what you need, um, what you're planning to use it for, and they'll help you figure out what you need to buy, if you don't already know. So if you are flexible and you look um, for fabric stores that are local to your area or nearby, you can find an amazing assortment of furs and usually you can find a great price. So like we said, you want to start with an inexpensive fur to uh, practice with and then move on to your higher end furs. But this is great because you can feel them all. Hi guys! So, as you can see, there are several different types of fleece, but this one we feel is a pretty good example of what you could use as a starter tail or um, paws. It has some kind of fuzz to it, sort of furry, um, but you could use, these are much cheaper than the fur that you're going to get. Um, so I highly recommend going to your local fabric store or big box store if you have to and just peruse all of the fleece and see if you can find something that just has some texture like that. Hey there. So we wanted to show you some examples of things that might not be great for practice and any of the heavy wovens, denims, twills, things like that that are very stiff are not going to be great to work with and they're not going to sew like a fur will. So definitely stick with a fleece or a soft cotton sheeting or even a soft cotton knit would work really well. But as you can see something like this, this denim, this woven is going to be really hard to work with and it's not going to move at all like fur. So it wouldn't be a great product to start out with. 
Hi guys, look at this great webbing. Could be really great, especially the rainbow um, for collars and harnesses. Just another idea. Okay, we're back. We hope you enjoyed the field trip and we will see you soon. Bye guys.